are the Nintendo Entertainment System. One of the most classic and revolutionary consoles. Filled with iconic games such as Super Mario Bros., Metroid, Duck Hunt. However, inside the Nintendo Entertainment System's vast array of games, there are some lesser known ones. Even some peculiar ones. One such example is a game called Lucifer's Manor. Lucifer's Manor was a game created by a small company called the Brockletons. They were, essentially, trying to make one of the very first horror games. They published the game in small quantities, so it's extremely hard to find a copy today. If there even are any still in existence. If you do somehow find one, to tell if it's legit, look for these obvious signs. The cover picture is a dead giveaway, as unlike the majority of the NES library, it looks as though a second grader drew all over it in art class. The cartridge is black, with these little specks of red all over, along with some scratches in an X formation along the sides. These effects were added to make the game seem creepier, although I don't see how bad drawings are creepy. Before I continue, I cannot stress this enough. It is strongly advised that you do not play this game. Saying that, I do realize that at least one of you will go out on an expedition to find it. So I'm just going to break down what happens within. Hopefully, to lessen your curiosity. The game starts out with this baby blue the Brockleton's logo appearing on the screen. Then, it goes straight to the title. Some cheesy, 8-bit, scary music plays, and the game starts. It begins in a third-person perspective, in which you, as the main character, simply have to walk up to the door of the manor and open it. After doing so, the game switches to a first-person perspective, which is very surprising, considering this came out in the beginning of the NES era. You go down a hall and strange music begins to play, somewhat resembling some kind of pitch-shifted 8-bit edition of a song straight from the movie Psycho. There are random doors scattered around the walls along with foreign text, which some believe to be Latin, sprawled across them. Every door leads to a room, one that contains a different key Once you find the key, you leave the room and continue on to the next door. This process continues until exactly the ninth door. After you get the key from that door, the music starts getting softer and softer, and soon all you can hear is white noise you then notice that the game starts looking worse and worse. It's as if the game is degrading right before your eyes. After this, a face, which is thought to be the main characters, 
appears on the screen, saying, Lucifer's Manor. And then, a few words in Latin, which roughly translate to, Hell awaits. The game then crashes, deleting all the saved data upon reinsertion of the cart. Sometimes, albeit very rarely, the game will not crash and you are allowed to keep playing. When you keep on walking through the hall, you will notice that the words begin changing from Latin to English, reading nonsense like, He stole it, not me. Dinner's ready. And the ship is here. Men, to your places. However, as you go further through the hall, the words get more and more disturbing. Phrases such as, off with his head, end my suffering, and please, Lord, stop with the torment, among others, begin to appear. Amid the sea of puzzling sentences, you will see this frequent message. Kiyomu is here. Nobody for sure knows who Kiyomu is, or why she is mentioned so much in these writings. Sometimes, as you are walking through the hallway, a girl's face will show up on the wall and just scream. This is who most people believe Kiyomu is. You will also begin to notice the occasional bloodstains on the keys and some mysterious writing in an unknown language inside the rooms. After the 15th room, the screen will start shaking and you move much more slowly. At this point, the girl is shown full body in front of a faraway door. You start moving slower and slower as she gets closer and closer until she is right in front of you. She screams and the screen goes black. The game resumes after a few seconds inside of a strange green room. When you open the door, you will notice that you are in a completely different hallway. The walls now contain what are believed to be hanging bodies. They have slash marks all over them to accompany the writing. The music changes again to a much creepier tune, and the bodies start eerily swaying along with it. The words on the walls, they get much worse, saying phrases such as, what type of cruel god would do this, and I'll do anything, let me out. There is also more mention of Kiyomu, with phrases such as, Kiyomu is waiting for you, and there is no escape from Kiyomu. Occasionally, she will appear in the distance, watching your every move. The new doors you go into all have more difficult spots to find the keys. After about eight more doors, the walls start glowing as if there's fire. Once you move about 12 more doors, 
you will see the main door, adorned with spikes and radiant flames. If you have collected all of the keys, you automatically begin to approach it. All the keys get inserted in, and the door opens. All that is inside is an endless black room, a void. Kiyomu walks up and says, I am the... And the game crashes. All saves are lost, and nobody knows what happens next. Now that you know how the game plays out, I urge you not to play it. Coincidence or not, all who have played the game have met troublesome fates. The people who did not get to see the second part had lesser things happen to them. For some people, their grades plummeted, or they got in trouble with the law for crimes they had not committed. Some even went broke or lost their job due to mysterious, unforeseen circumstances. However, for the people who actually did see the second part, the majority had much more severe problems. Some of the lucky ones died or had someone they loved die. For the most part though, the people would go insane, speaking of how Kiyomo is hunting them, trying to kill them, and how she is torturing them. Some of them were even found hanging, covered in self-inflicted blade wounds. Now, I would be lying if I said that everyone who played the game or reached that hidden second part met with misfortune. But these coincidences are undeniable, and it's truly not worth the risk. So, like I said, if ever you find this game, it is advisable that you do not play it. Immediately destroy it. That is unless you have a death wish.